Part 1 is a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to make this template. Part 2 is the walkthrough of the template if you just want to see that. Let's jump into it. Okay, so we want to create a database here. But the database, we don't want to just do a database like a table view. We want to be fancy and do a gallery. So you're going to do forward slash and write gallery and click on gallery view. Now here, you're going to click on new database. We'll click that and we'll call this book library. Now the first thing we're going to do is go up to these three dots, click on full width and click on that. Now you can see it is full width. Now as you can see, these tiles are quite large. So we're just going to make them a bit smaller. We're going to click on these three dots. Then we're going to click on layout. And then you can see card size here. And we're going to change it from medium to small. Now there are a few different properties that we want to add to this library. So let's just click on one of these. And here we can see our properties. So we have the created date, which is probably not that important for this. We have the tags, but now we are going to add a bunch. So let's start with add a property and let's do text. And we're going to call this author. So this is just a text one. Now you could do author as a tag. And I've seen a lot of creators do that. And the reason they do that is so you can have the same author for multiple if you want to search for that creator. However, that's actually kind of pointless because A, you're going to have like a million tags, which gets very confusing. And we can actually just search by text field. So if you want to, you can click on filter and then you can just search by author. So then when you start typing a name, obviously none of these have names. You can then just find it by searching for their name. So uh, it's kind of pointless doing a tag for this and it just ends up being a bit cluttery because you'll end up having 50, 100 tags or whatever. So I prefer just doing a text field for this. Now, obviously this is where the book name goes. So I'll just write book name there. Then we can change this tags to a status, but what I'll do is just delete it so you can see how to do this. Uh, I'll just delete them. So add a property. Now you can do it either as a select, a multi-select, a status. There's a bunch of different ways of doing this. I prefer working with selects. So I'll do that and change this to status. So we could have want. So we want the book. We could have reading and we can have finished. And then let's say we want to change the colors. Finished should be green in my opinion. So if we hover over this, you can see these three dots here. If you click on that, you can now change it. So I'll go down to the green and click on that. And then let's change reading to yellow and want to red. So I've just got these three, but obviously you can add more. Now we're going to add another property and this will be a multi-select and this will be topic. So if you're anything like me, the topics will most likely be uh, productivity, self-help, finance, stuff like that. By the way, if you want to learn about productivity, I have a free newsletter link in the description. It's pretty cool. Now, another thing we might want to know is when we finished reading the book. Just to get sidetracked for a second, a really cool thing that uh, Notion does is AI suggests property ideas that you could add. So genre, language, published date, all of this stuff, uh, ISBN. I don't know. I just think it's really cool. Okay. So here we'll click on date and we'll call this finished reading. And as you can see, you can just click in when you finished it. Add another property and let's do this as a review. So what I'm going to do down here is just do colon and then write star. Here we have star and I'm going to copy, paste, 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 paste. And then here under review, we'll click on this space and click create, create. I'm just going to make all of these have yellow backgrounds. So now we have a really simple review system. So if you want to find, oh, what are all the five star books that I've read? You can easily filter and search by that. Just delete this. Now, another property that would be cool to add would be a recommended by. So to do this, we can do, a, there's just a bunch of different ways we could do this. We could do it as a text. So we just write in the name. We could do a select, we could do a multi-select if multiple people have recommended a book. We could do a person, we could do an email, we could do a phone, we could do a, a relation. There's a bunch of different ways to do this. But for the sake of keeping this very simplistic and not making this overly cluttered or complicated, let's just do a text field recommended by. Now let's add some book covers in here. There's a bunch of different ways we could do this. A we could add it in this space here, so we can just copy and paste. So if I find an image, I'll do copy and then just paste the image here. So now you can see that it has it here. Now, as you can see, it's not taking up the whole screen, which I don't like. I want to be able to see the entire book cover. So to change that, we'll go to these three dots. We'll click on layout and then here we can see fit image. So if we click on that 
and as you can see, you can now see the entire book cover. So that is one way of adding book covers, and it's a very easy way to do it. However, the plan is here to actually have us taking notes here. Notes, blah, blah. And it's going to be annoying to work with and have this above. So let's delete that. And now, as you can see, notes, blah, blah, is showing up here. So what we'll do is change a setting. When we click on this, we're going to hover up here and where we can see add icon and add cover, we're going to click on add cover. Then we're going to do change cover. It will just auto generate a random image from Unsplash. So we'll do change cover. And then here we can click on link or upload. So if you have the image downloaded on your computer, you can click on upload, but it's going to be a lot easier just to use the link function. So you'll just search for the book and images. And then when you find the cover, you'll right click and click on copy image address. So you don't want to do copy link address, you want to do copy image address. And now here under link, we'll just hit paste and submit. As you can see that loads in here. Now the problem is it's not showing up here. So that's the setting we're going to change. All we do is go to these three dots, click on layout. And then here we want to change the card preview from being the page content. So right now, as you can see, we're seeing the page content notes, blah, blah. We want to change that to page cover. And now as you can see, it's showing up. So now when we take notes down here, it's not showing up. We can take all of our book notes in here, have good habits, and that note won't replace or take over this book cover. Now, as you can see, we can only see the book name here. So we want to see a few of those properties that we have here before even clicking on the book. So we'll go over here to the three dots. We'll click on properties. And then here we can choose, do we want author, finished reading, recommended by, review, status, topic. So let's say I want to see the author and the review. Now what we can do is set up a few groups. So there's a bunch of different ways we could do this. But this gallery view, let's just change this to all books. And then I'll change this icon here, click on that and change it to a book. Now what I'm going to do is duplicate this by right clicking and doing duplicate. And I'll call this finished. And then change this icon to a check mark. So in hindsight, now when I think about it, you're only gonna to wanna to see reviews for something you've actually read. So if we go back to all books, we don't need to see the reviews here because we haven't read all of these books. But what we might want to do is sort these by different groups. So we're going to click on these three dots and click on group. Now here we can group by uh, author, which doesn't make a lot of sense unless you're reading by like three authors and that's it. We could group by finished reading, which also doesn't make sense unless you're finishing like 17 books every day. So most likely we'll group by topic or status. So why don't we create both? Let's click on status for this one. So currently we only have the visible group of reading. So we're going to click on this finished and want here just on this eyeball icon, click on that. Then I think it makes most sense to have reading at the top then want underneath that, then finished, and then no status at the bottom. So now here we can see all the books we're currently reading, all the books that we want. So if we click here, it will automatically get assigned with a status of want. Same thing for finished, you click here, automatically assigns finished. So this is a really easy way to see the books. Now let's say we also want to categorize these by topic. So let's create another one by doing all books and doing right click duplicate. And let's call this topics. And then let's change the group from group by status, change that to by topic. So then we have finance, productivity, and self-help. I'll move productivity to the top and we can close this. So now we can see the books under topics. Now, as you can see, Atomic Habits has been assigned under finance, self-help, and productivity. And that's because it is a multi-select. So if I get rid of self-help and finance and just have it under productivity, you can now see it's just showing up there. And these blank pages that got created, page two and page three, and these two untitled ones have no topic. So they're showing up here at the bottom. You can always close the toggle if you don't wanna see them just by doing that. But for now, I will delete these as well. I'm just going to move this by dragging that that way. So we have finished, topics, and all books. So I'll go to these three dots. And like I was saying before and got distracted, we're going to change that we're not seeing the review for this all books. So we're going to untick the review there. But under this all books tab, we might want to see quickly what topic is it. So we'll just click on that. Now I can see here Atomic Habits is under productivity. So then under the topics tab here, we'll click on that, click on the properties and we don't want to see the review, but we might want to see the status. So I'll click on that so we can see our oh, cool under productivity, the book I'm currently reading Atomic Habits. And then in the last tab of finished, let's click on the three dots, click on properties. 
And then here we might want to see when did we finish reading it. We might not want to see the author, but we want to see the review. Uh, and I think that should be enough. We just want to know quickly what is the review and when was it finished reading. And then what we can do is sort this. So we'll click on the sort button here. And we can either sort this in two ways that make most sense for me. Either the review, so we can see, oh, I want to see all the five star reviewed books first. Or we can sort this by finished reading. So here we can choose, do we want to see it by ascending or descending? So now if I add a date to this, let's say I finished it today, that shows up here. And then when I add the next book, and let's say that was on the first, it's showing up here. But if I say I've somehow finished this in the future, as you can see, it jumps ahead and puts it in front of it. So I've just added a few books here. For the finished tab to work, you're going to want to click on filter and then have a filter here, add advanced filter, where status is finished. Now, as you can see, only the books that I've finished are popping up here. And let's leave a review for these two, five star, uh, five star. Now, as you can see, this looks really boring, which I understand, but that's the good thing. That's actually the point of this. We want to make this simple to use so you can actually use it in the long run. A lot of these others will have a bunch of extra fields that you just don't need. This recommended by, you might not even need it. This author, you might not even need it. But quite frankly, adding stuff like publisher and ISBN isn't, or publication date, that stuff doesn't actually matter. And what's going to happen is you're going to have more stuff that you have to fill out and then you're just going to stop using it. We want to make sure that it's actually simple and easy to use for you to want to keep using it in the long run. Now there is one last thing that we want to add. We're going to do forward slash and write button. Click on that. Now what we want is to have this button sitting in our dashboard. So if you use my headquarters template, you know that there is a resource button sitting at the top of the template. You can click on that and then just add a book very quickly. We want to make sure that in our main dashboard, we have access to this without having to go to this book library page and add it here. Because quite frankly, most likely you'll get distracted when you get in here uh, because that's just how the brain works. So we want to make sure that it's very easy to add a new book without being distracted. So I'll just click on here and write new book. Then we'll change the settings here. When this new button is clicked, then what we want to do is add a page to, and now we have to select the database. So this database is called book library. So we'll select book library. Then what we can do is automatically have a property here. So we're going to actually automatically set up that the status is want, because most likely when you click on new book, it's a book that you want to read. You're not going to be clicking it when you've finished a book, most likely. Obviously, you can always change this. It's just saving us that split second and removing that extra barrier to adding a book. Now we're going to click on add a step. And this is the last thing. We just want to open up that page. Then here you will click on new page added. So this button works that when you click on new book, then a new page is added to the book library, automatically assigns the status of want. It opens up that new page you just created. And here we can select, do we want it in side peak, center peak, or full page? Personally, I prefer center peak. Then we can just click on done. You can also add a, uh, an icon here if you want. So we can just do a book icon, that makes sense. And click on done. So now what you'll do is drag this button into your dashboard. So most likely your dashboard that you use on a consistent basis, your main second brain or whatever you're using, will be here on the side. So all you have to do is click on these six dots here next to it. Click on that and then you can drag it and you'll just drag and drop it onto that page here on the side. It will then appear at the bottom of that page and you can just drag it to the top or wherever you want to place it. Another thing to mention, you can move about the order of these if you want. So you just go to the six dots here and you can drag them here. So you might want author first, then the topic, uh, then the status, finished reading could go last, recommended by and review. All right, let's take a look through our book library template. Now, as you can see, it is very simple, but that is a good thing. As I explained in the build through, having it simple is a very, very important thing because we want it easy to actually use for the long run. If there are too many different things going on and it's really cognitively overwhelming, we're not actually going to stick with it and use it, which is very important for stuff like this. Now, in this book library, we have three tabs. We have all books, topics, and finished. In all books, you can see it's divided into three sections here. We have the reading, want, and finished. So if we change any of these, let's say the power of habit goes from a want to me starting to read it, you can see that it jumps up here into this section. 
Now what I've done is made it super simple to use. You can fill out the author, so you just write their name here. You can select your topic, so add as many topics as you want. And for each book, you can add as many topics associated with it as you want, as you can see. It is a multi-select. You can change the status here from reading, want, and finished. You can add a recommended by. So if a, a YouTuber recommends it, if a friend recommends it, you can write it down here just so you know, oh, okay, this is the person who recommended it for me. You can add a review, which I'll show you how it looks on the finished tab. And you can add when you finished reading it. So it's a very, very simple system to use. So now I want to find a book that is perfectly suited for me. And to do that, I'll use short form. That's right, I've got my first sponsor and it's short form. I've gotten a ton of sponsor requests and turned them all down because they weren't actually useful products, but short form is the solution for your book nerd needs. It's the most efficient way that I find book recommendations to add to my personal library. See, if you're anything like me, you mainly read self-improvement, business, entrepreneur, entre, entrepreneur, shit, on, entrepreneur, entre, marketing, sales, productivity, and all that good stuff. That's what Shortform specializes in. They create high quality guides to non-fiction books specifically, which is great because I don't think I've read a single fiction book in my entire life. My parents handed me the four hour work week at age two and said, it's embarrassing that you don't have a virtual assistant by now. So before in the video, when I was talking about taking notes as you read, well, with short form, you wouldn't have to take notes as you read, you could just enjoy reading the book. Then after you've read it, you can find the comprehensive summary of all the book's key ideas, explained simply with commentary and analysis. And Shortform drops new book guides and articles every week, and subscribers get to vote on what books to cover. Shortform is constantly adding new features such as Shortform AI, a browser extension that instantly summarizes books, articles, emails, and get this, even YouTube videos. So let's find another book for my Notion book library that I can add in here. So I'll go to the business category and have a scroll down. And if I like anything, you know, I can just add it like that, which is really cool. You just bookmark it. Uh, oh, I've been meaning to read this. Dotcom Secrets. I've heard Ali Abdal recommend this a million times. I'm going to add that to my list. Let's go to Digital Minimalism. And then here you have a one page summary of the book, all the key points, all the key lessons right in here for you to read. So this is an awesome way to remind yourself in the future about the lessons that you learned in this book. And if we click on this button here, we can actually see the full book guide. So this is just the one page summary, but we can get a summary of chapter two. It, I mean, it's just so incredibly useful. It's such an efficient way to remind yourself of the lessons that you've learned from a book without having to reread the entire book. All right, let's add digital minimalism to my Notion book library. So I'll just Google digital minimalism cover. Click on the cover here and right click. And here I will do copy image address. Do not do copy link address, you want copy image address. And then this button here, which will sit in your actual dashboard that you use, so it won't be on this page, you're going to move it to your dashboard. If you want to know how to do that, go to this timestamp. So you'll click on that and you'll fill out these details. Digital minimalism, author is Cal Newport. Topic is self-help. Status automatically gets assigned want. That happens when I click on this button. Recommended by everyone and then to add the cover i will do add cover change cover and then click on this link button and then here i'll just paste that link and do submit so now when i click away you can see that this has been added into my database so let's have a look at the topics tab so this works very similarly to this but here we're sorting it by reading once and finished and on this we're sorting it by the actual topic, which makes sense. So productivity, self-help, psychology, and here we can even see the ones with no topic. So these ones here, I've forgotten to assign a topic to it. That doesn't matter, they're showing up here so I can click on it and then just click on the topic and say, this is productivity. And deep work is productivity as well. And then lastly, we have the finish tab. So if we click on this, we can see all the books we've finished and we can see the review. So for both of these, I've given them five-star reviews and somehow I've had a very productive day and managed to finish reading them both today. So it's actually showing me the finished reading date and the review property right here. This template is 100% free for you to download and use. I hope it was helpful. If you like my philosophy and thinking behind Notion templates, you will love my headquarters template. It is my all-in-one Notion system for tasks, projects, notes, resources, bottleneck analysis, journaling, everything you can think of. I have built it by taking my favorite productivity methods and creating a template around that. Click here to view that video and thank you so much for watching.